Hi, this is Andy of Andy's Personal Development, and we are currently live in the breakout room. So, welcome and welcome, and we love being here for you with quality and value to inspire and to transform. Remember, we are on Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon, and iTunes. Today, as usual, we have a special guest to share with you for your development and growth and to live your better informed life. So, grab a cup, pull up a seat, and stay tuned for the introduction right here now, live in the breakout room. It's the place for health, happiness, and prosperity. Stay tuned. Introducing Cindy Costley. Here's our guest of the moment. Cindy Costley is a survivor, an author, speaker, and mast cell allergy wellness coach. Her life's work is in helping individuals connect their stress, trauma, and allergic reactions and heal. It's included in the Underline Answers Network, responsible for bringing you information on good health and overcoming allergies and all levels of sickness and lifestyle diseases. Cindy is also a contributing author. The book entitled Navigating the Clickety Clack How to Live a Peaceful Life in a Seemingly Toxic World. So, Let's welcome live in the breakout room our survivor guest, Cindy Costley. Hi and welcome, Cindy. Welcome to the breakout room. We are Hello. so happy and so glad to have you. How are you doing this afternoon, Cindy? Hello, Andy. I am great. Thank you. What an introduction. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, you are the star, you know, you are the person of interest as we speak. So we have to make you look good so that you know that you have to live up to, <laughs> you have to, live up to certain expectations, right? I yeah. love it. Yes, yeah. that's really, really great. I love what you do. I'm Wonderful. I'm inspired by you. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And the, the, the rules are reversed. You inspire me as well. Oh, so, thank you. How's the weather by you, Cindy? Oh, it's fabulous. Of course, we live in sunny Southern California. So, right, right, right. <laughs> I right, right. have, uh, we're down at the beach. So, it's about 72 today. Perfect, ideal weather. So, Wonderful. Can't, can't go wrong here. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right, Cindy, what we want to do is get into our discussion. Because we're going to have anxious people waiting for information and for value, which we have promised. And I'm going to look at some information that you have shared. And I'm going to read something. And I would ask you to please help us understand what this meant for you. Sure. Or what it means for you. Yeah. Um, it says, I have been blessed to live in the deep, mm -hmm. the dark, the regression, the falling, and then the rising for seven years. Yes, that is the epitome of the conversation we're going to have <laughs> this afternoon. But I need for you to share with us how you came to express it in such a plain and simple manner. Seven years is a long time. How was that for you? It is a long time. It has been a journey. Um, I, I'm not going to lie. Like I said, it, it's been dark. It's been difficult. And every step of the way, it's been amazingly inspiring and beautiful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as I've just watched my body. I've just completely transformed my entire thought process around what's possible for my body, what's yeah. possible for my life. Right. And so even through those hard, dark times, every, every one of them created this beautiful lesson and opportunity for me to grow and see life in a completely different way. Ah, that's wonderful. Yeah. As we are on that, I'm getting a sense of uh, a hope and achievement that you would have looked through those situations because you talk about life lessons. What are some of the lessons, Cindy, that you would have learned as a result of the experience? Oh, my goodness. There's so many. <laughs> I would say the biggest lesson that I've learned is how 
innately intelligent our bodies are. Right. My body knew everything I needed every step of the way and still does. I'm still going through mm -hmm. this healing process. Right. And every single time I had an allergic reaction or had a reaction to a treatment that I do, I do weekly treatments still. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And every time my body releases that treatment, releases the emotion from it. For instance, yesterday's treatment was all about um, my uh, feeling of, not grief. I'm, um, ah, I'm drawing a blank on what it was, the emotion that we did yesterday, but it'll come back to me as soon as I stop trying to think of it. But okay. what happens is once I release it, it comes out. So it shows up in the form of whatever my allergic reactions used to be. So, and then it's done and it's gone and okay. my body releasing it. So basically my body, and, and for many of us, this is true, Hold mm -hmm. on to these emotions. And when we don't allow ourselves to process, to uh -huh. feel, to, you know, have an, an interaction with those emotions that we're experiencing in life, we yeah. just shove them in and then they create this disease. And okay. so as I've unlayered and peeled away every single layer, and I had a lot of layers to peel, which is why we're talking seven years of healing. Um, I got to learn what my body was actually trying to tell me for over 34 years. Okay. So I, it, it just the innate ability of our body to reveal our truth is phenomenal when we stop and learn to listen. That's probably my right. biggest life lesson. But I mean, I heal, I've healed every aspect of my life in the last seven years, my career, my relationships, my, my, my relationship with myself, my finances. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when we choose to fully heal and we dive in and say yes, the universe just allows it to happen and, and it unfolds one step at a time as, you know, as we're ready. And that's why it's been such a long process because I've really worked through every aspect of re reforming and re, as re envisioning a whole new life for myself. Uh, thanks for sharing. Sounds good. We're going to get back, you know, to that a little bit later, but, I'm just curious, Cindy, could yeah. you recall before all the, the pain and the darkness and the regression, could you call, recall any period of time in your life before that when you were just a normal, healthy individual? Hmm. Honestly, um, I, 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 all this started for me at age 15. Right. So at age 15, I suddenly became allergic to everything in the world. Wow. And I don't, I did have moments throughout those years of just pure health, mm -hmm. but they were very brief. Okay. So my allergic reactions would come. I would, and for me, it was always in the form of a massive rash all over my body and severe stomach problems. And so I would deal with that. And then I might have a couple weeks of calm and peace where my skin was clear and I wasn't having dealing with allergic reactions. And then it would, an, another thing would trigger it and it would come back again. Uh, and there were times I would go months, in between being clear, but not very often. For 34 wow. years, I really just dealt with one severe allergic reaction after another. And I, I lived my life through that. Okay. I learned how to adapt. I raised three kids. I got, I went to school and got a degree. I worked full time and then I started my own company. So I, I thrived as much as I could thrive with having all of those allergic reactions until my body said no more and started to shut down because it was tired of okay, okay. And and unable to cope. Great. And, and that within there lies the level of inspiration that you can give people because you have thrived and you have overcome despite yeah. uh, all the challenges. But um, I'm even more curious, was there anyone else in your family who would have suffered similar fate or anything like you were going through? Or was it just you singularly, you know, that was, it was just me. this. Just you. Just wow. me. My father, he passed away very young at 50, but he had some asthma and minor allergies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one that has this level of allergies. Wow. And um and, and it's not so what I know now is yes, they're allergic reactions, but it's not that I have this mast cell disorder or that I'm allergic. It was actually all my trauma that as a child that manifested as allergic reactions. Okay. So I was able to heal because I chose to heal my trauma. Right. It just took me 34 years to connect the two. 
<laughs> because I had wow, all this right. massive trauma as a child, but I was happy. So I went through life, you know, happy, even with all these allergic reactions and joyful and grateful for every day that I got to live, not recognizing that by not addressing my trauma, by not, you know, healing that I was actually creating all of these allergic reactions in my body. Wow. Yeah. So after 34 years, something happened and you decided mentally that you were not supposed to go through stuff like that, suffer stuff like that, that there was yeah. a better way to live. What was that moment like for you, that light bulb moment for you? How do you remember that experience? I remember it very clearly because my family and I had gone to the Delta, which is a lake, a nearby lake. And I'd never been, we'd okay. never been to that lake. I'm an avid water skier. Yeah. Uh, and we'd never gone there. And within a few hours of swimming in the Delta, I ended up at the hospital. Wow. Um, there was, we, we think it was the runoff of the pesticides because there's a lot of farmland around that lake mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. into the lake that caused the severe allergic reaction. And I never recovered from that. So, you know, normally that kind of thing would recover after a few weeks, but I just kept getting sicker and sicker, having one allergic reaction after another on top of one another, on top of one another for okay. almost a year. And my sister looked at me one day, she grabbed my shoulders and she said, you are dying. Hmm. And the night before I had told my husband, I said, my soul wants to dance. It is so tired of being in this body and it wants mm -hmm. to dance. And I, and I feel it, honey. I said, I'm going to, my soul wants to dance and it's going to happen here on earth or not. And I was scared. I knew. Wow. And then my sister says that to me the next day. And I was just in this crossroads of almost like I was choosing two paths. Do I continue down the road I'm on? And I knew that was not going to go well. Or do I mm -hmm. just totally give in, surrender, and just ask? I just asked the universe, show me, you know, this. I just realized in that moment, I don't have to be the girl allergic to the world. I literally had succumbed to that kind of jokingly, oh yeah, I'm allergic to the world, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And in that moment, I just, I just had this feeling, I just knew that I was meant to be more than that, that I right. actually didn't have to suffer my whole life. Right. And I had no idea how I was gonna get there. <laughs> I just knew it was possible. And I knew that I, I had to give my all to try. And we had just, my daughter had just had a baby, we had our first grandbaby, and I said, I wanna be here for that baby. And I needed to do everything I could to allow that to happen. So that okay. was the moment. Yeah. All right. That was inspiring. Thank you for sharing, Cindy. Yeah. Um, but you also said, when I think about my healing process, I am truly humbled by the moment or the amount of love and support I have received my entire life. And yeah. it says it really does take a village. Yes. Are you speaking about the people that were around you, the team, your family? Who are you referring to when you speak about the village? It takes a village. Throughout those 34 years, I was down a lot. And as okay. I mentioned, I raised kids and went to school. I did all of that. But when I would go down, I would go down hard. And I was right. in bed for weeks at a time. And my family, who are just this incredible you know, group of individuals would just uh -huh. jump in. Cindy's down. We'll take the kids here. We'll do this. We'll get dinner over at your house. And so wow. in a way it was really great. And now I also look back and realize, wow, I didn't even understand what they were doing for me. All I right. had no idea how much they sacrificed mm -hmm. for me to live the life that I lived because, you know, my husband's family and mine, this was just a cumulative and all of my friends, you know, we would yeah. get invited to go to dinners and my friends would be like, I cleaned the house and I, we're going to sit outside and I bought a heater so that we could be outside and we're putting the cats over here. And, you know, I made this certain food, like for all those years, everybody made accommodations to allow me to live the best life I could with what wonderful, I was wonderful. Wonderful. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's amazing, Cindy. Uh, I'm gonna lovely. call I'm gonna call two names for you. Yes. Derek Cosley yes. and Laurie. Mm. Tell me the roles that pe these people would have played in your life. And I know it would be endearing and uplifting, but just share with us. Yeah. My husband is my absolute Derek Cosley is my husband. Right. And he is my absolute hero. Right. He's the silent warrior in this, all of this, because okay. my, what I've been through, especially these last seven years and mm -hmm. in all those years prior being married to him have always been about me. I'm like, you know, I'm down, he's 
figuring it all out, right? Um, he, when I first met him, I had to call our first date. I was in the restroom, had an allergic reaction to the food. I was in the restroom and he had to come in and get me. And I had, I won't even describe it, but I had things coming out of places I shouldn't. And wow, he lifted wow. me up, took mm. me home, to, took care of me. And that was our very first date. And to me, that's just the perfect example of who this man is because he has, been by my side and 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 sacrificed way more than I think most people would ever sacrifice in staying with me through these years. So that's yeah. my husband who okay. I'm blessed to be married to. And then my sister, mm -hmm. I, my sister and brother are both just incredible human beings in their own way. And, and because Lori lives near me, she's really walked this path with me. Okay. So those days that I just was like, I can't do this. I don't know. I don't know how to get through this day. She would suddenly send a text. She could feel me. She would suddenly call me or text me and say, what's going on? I feel you. What's happening? I know that you need me, wow. you know? Yeah. yeah and yeah. we just have this connection. And she again, stepped in like everybody else did. But beyond that was my moral support. And the one that was just like, you've got this always holding me to what's possible for me, always believing in me and reminding me what was possible for myself when I couldn't, when I couldn't get there, when I didn't yeah. know it. All right. Kudos to Derek and uh, your yes. sister and your brother. Thank you for Amazing. mentioning them. Of course. Of Beautiful. course. Family is wonderful. It's one of the most important connections we could have in this life. And you have been blessed. Yes. Believe me, I you have. have been blessed. That's a wonderful story, Cindy. I have. Tell Thank us, you. what what could be, if you would have to choose one moment in your life that you think is unforgettable, you know, uh, indelibly set in your mind, what would be your most memorable moment in life? Hmm. Um, boy, there's a few different things that I could go to. Uh-huh. Uh, I'd have to say watch. So, okay. So I could go two different directions with this. So I'm going to start with the positive. Right. I would definitely say watching my grandbaby come into this world. Oh, Being yes. in the room when my daughter, who I birthed, brought her first child in the world and let me be in the room with her. Okay. That was definitely the most memorable, special moment to watch your baby have a baby and bring life into the world. Mm-hmm. On a on my healing journey and all that, I'd have to say my traumas, um, especially the one at age 14, uh -huh. I was given some alcohol and I woke up, I passed out and I woke up with four or five boys on me. My, my, And my. I never said one word about that until 34 years later when somebody a doctor and a and a healer had told me that th that's the reason part of the reason for my disease okay and but it always stayed in my head because mm -hmm. i never healed it so i look back now and i think i'm able to thank those experiences that was one of them that sticks out the most but there were two others that were really big severe traumas and i am able now to say thank you because I'm who I am today and I'm who, and I, I know I went through a very hard time for 34 years, but being able to heal it and share with others and help heal others is a gift. And I wouldn't, I don't yes. think I'd be doing that without having gone through that. Yes. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing, Cindy. Yeah. Um, what is your biggest concern about people and life as a whole in terms of the challenges that we are currently going through in the world. If you had a pic to paint a picture of the ideal world without so many struggles, what would it like be for you? Maybe a utopia moment or something. We all have that imagination from, you know, one point in time or the not. What yeah. would it be for you, Cindy? Oh, that's such a beautiful question. And I, I have this visual of everybody healing uh -huh. their own yes. hurts. Yes. Because yes. we can help others when we are not when we're when we've healed ourselves. Okay. And we are better humans and more functional humans and we can do more for the world and uh -huh. for our families if we heal ourselves. Right. And I, I look at I had somebody tell me once that your hardest 
thing is going to be that you like when you get to when you actually heal this, your hardest part about this is going to be knowing you could have done this years ago. Okay. And I do come back to that because it, had I recognized that my how much my trauma has affected my body mm -hmm. and healed this years and years ago, I would have suffered for far less time. Yes. Yes. Right. And I would have been able to do so much more of what I'm getting to do now. So I envision this world where we go through the pain. I don't think we can really avoid pain. That's just part mm -hmm. of the human experience. Yeah. But then we get the help and we work on ourselves. You know, as a mom, it was all about my kids, my kids, my husband, my family, right? My work, yeah. my job, yeah. Yeah. never about me in, unless I was down, right? Then I would just heal that incident, but not the underlying reasons behind right. why I was having yes. all of this. Yes. So if we if we can all just bring our courage, you know, dive deep and find our courage and our strength to face those hard times and to heal and to not just keep shoving it in and shoving it into our bodies. Uh -huh. I do think the world will be a much more joyful, peaceful, loving place. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Um, we we want to look at the writing that uh, you have done um, mm. as a contributing author to uh, the book. It's a strange title. How did they come up with that? Title? <laughs> they really <did>. unusual. <laughs> I know it was during COVID uh -huh. and the, um, the main author. So Keith, he, yeah. and, and the, um, uh, he's the one that published it, the publisher. Okay. Okay. He wrote this to try to help people going through COVID mm -hmm. and really just inspire individuals and he asked me to be a part of the first book and I just wasn't in a place. I was still healing. I wasn't in a place to be able to do that. Okay. Okay. And it was so beautiful and so powerful. And it had just such a, a mark on people's lives. Like I had friends read it that were just like, wow, I was yeah. really inspired by this. Yes. So it was a gift to me to be able to be a part of that second book. But I don't actually know how he came up with the actual title other oh, than... Okay. When you look at the clickety clack, so mm -hmm. you know, the, the concept behind that is when you're riding your bike and you're changing gears, yeah. there's this yeah. moment in between each gear, right? Where it's like, and then you yeah. let it smooth. Yeah. And that's how life is. We all have these moments of, you know, clickety clack, right? Where we're just struggling and then we get through it. And the key is how do you get through it? Yes. How do you get through it with ease and grace? And, you know, to where you're better off as opposed to more harmed from it. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, that's inspiring. I like it. So we are about halfway in our show. We have our guest survivor, Cindy Cosley. And she has been inspiring thus far and adding value, I'm sure, to the show and to the platform. So we're going to take a quick break, about a couple of minutes or so. And then we're going to be right back with Cindy. Stay tuned everyone and thanks for sharing cindy you're welcome find radioguest.com the place to click to find guests to interview for free and if you're a radio show booker podcaster talk show host or television producer then this is the place to get podcasts and radio interviews or promote your books and products as a guest expert sponsor find radioguest.com check it out Hi people, this is a special invitation for you to join our community. Yes, we're inviting you to join our community for 2022. What's in store? Well, what we want is your feedback on our content and our guests, but more so on what you need to be inspired and transformed from your current condition to one of happiness, health, and prosperity. So drop us a line and reach out. Help us to better help you achieve your goals. So, people, inbox me at www.facebook.com slash mddreamer slash. That's www.facebook.com slash mddreamer slash. Or send me an email at lovebitsa at gmail.com. That's lovebitsa at gmail.com. We love hearing from you as we build our partnership in growth and development. And we look forward to your communicating. Help us to help you to live a better life in personal growth and development from Andy's personal development. We love you. We look forward to hearing from you. See you soon.
Bye for now. And we are back live with Cindy Cosley, our special guest on Andy's personal development. And she has been sharing her inspiring and warm story for us to get value and to continue to strive to achieve health and happiness and prosperity in our lives. Cindy, I want to know, you know, out of curiosity as well, how do you inject your personal knowledge, your experience, and all the things that you've gathered over the years into the lives of other people? What is that uh, interaction like in terms of maybe clientele or some audience that you get the opportunity to speak with? How do you convey that information to them and it brings that same level of conviction and understanding? Hmm. I, so my background is in dietetics. I've, okay. worked, I've worked with individuals for years, helping them yeah. make you know, powerful lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. But going through this healing process has really helped me to understand so much more, one, about what clients go through yeah. And, and what they live through on a daily basis trying to heal and okay. also how these allergic reactions, you know, how we can manage and, and control our allergic reactions. So I have shifted to working with individuals as, you know, as a mast cell and allergy specialist. And I do that right now by doing a lot of podcasts and I'm a, you mm -hmm. know, a speaker. Yeah. Uh, I inspire people through my story. And then also through my knowledge and what I'm able to bring to the table in terms of how I've healed my, my, you know, allergies, as well as what I've learned through the years, just, you know, in terms of my degree and my background, my, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know exactly. The I, I hear asking. you. I got it. I got it. Um, but I, I'm writing a book also. So my book is almost done and I'm okay. excited about that. And then I have a platform where it's a community membership. So people that are suffering from allergies, from mast cell um, disorders, we all come together and we just talk every other week about, you know, how to heal on a physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic level. Because I truly believe that had I not focused and been willing to focus on all of those, not just the physical, not just emotional, but also the mental, spiritual, and energetic, which is often left out of the healing yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. That I that's why I was able to have a full and complete healing. And that's what I bring to my clients and work with them in really looking at the full picture of why they got where they're at, why they're struggling with, you know, what underlying reasons are causing mm -hmm. their reactions and how do they heal over the long term. So that's right. why it's a community, because it doesn't it's not something they can just come to me once and they're suddenly fixed. Right. There isn't a quick fix when it comes to healing. It's a process and it's a commitment. Right. right. And so we work together and inspire one another in this community platform to really help one another grow. It's very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds really powerful. Uh, what about, um, is it the underlying answers? Is that, is that the community? Yes. So it's, right. a, it's the underlying answers.com and mm -hmm. it's, um, designed to really help people step into their power, choose what they want. Yeah. You know, when I first was so sick, I realized I don't even, I don't even have a vision for myself of what I want. Yeah. And so I help individuals really create this vision of what they want their life to look like so that they can then step back and say, okay, this is what I want. This is what I now have. Mm -hmm. so let's let's get real, right? Yeah. Let's get yeah. real and say, okay, I want to be here, but I'm actually here right now. And now uh -huh. let's take steps slowly, one step at a time, to heal our lives and um, be well and dive into what we're each person's meant to be something really great and wonderful in this world. You know, yes. we all yeah. are so special. Every single person has gifts and you know so much to bring to the world, and we can't do that until we're whole and healed. And so we work together with that. Right, right. Sounds really wonderful. Yeah. Um, three things, three things came out to me there. First of all, you talk about having that vision uh, yes. of, of who you want to be, and then being yeah. truthful about it. Yeah. And of course, understanding that there is a process that must take place. You, yes. you have to go from one step to the next. Uh, yeah. For me personally, in my life, I think it's like. I measure my my improvement every day 
by telling myself if I could improve on every aspect of my life by at least 1% every day, incrementally in steps, you know, uh, yes. eventually we're going to get to a place where our level of competence increases. We're not yes. going to be perfect, but at least we could get better. And, um, and I, I understand that from what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, tell me something, Cindy. That's powerful. What is the thing that gets you up in the morning and keeps you pushing through the day? What is the big why for you? My big why is so easy. It's uh -huh. to really support others who've been through what I've been through. Okay. I did. We talked about this earlier. I had that community. I had right. that family. I had mm -hmm. that support. And a lot of people don't. A okay. lot of people are not as blessed as I am, as I have been to get me through that time. But even with all of that, I still went through so much, right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. and we didn't get to the answers. Like I'd go to a doctor and I'd get one, you know, pill after another, one steroid after another. And it was only once I really started diving into who I'm meant to be and what I'm supposed to be in this world that I started looking at those underlying reasons behind all of the allergic reactions. So every morning I know that I get to wake up and help others heal and look at what's actually causing them to suffer in the first place Yeah, and yeah. do it hopefully sooner than I did. I mean, I'm still only 54, but hey. I could have done it 20 <laughs> years ago, right? So right, right. I love and I'm motivated and, and blessed and you know like that motivation of what wakes gets me going in the morning is really all about helping people not suffer as long as i did and giving them that that love and that support that they deserve and some people might not have you know i was on the phone yeah. with a client yesterday and she said i don't have anybody in my life that's supporting me in this journey i said yes you do you have mm -hmm. us you mm -hmm. have us and so you you focus right here with us Mm -hmm. And we're going to get you one step at a time. Don't worry. Right. Don't worry. But I, it made me really realize how lucky I was yeah. to have that support and that I get to give that support to others. So to our, in throughout the whole community, you know, our yes. underlying answers community is designed to yeah. have everybody support one another. Okay. Fantastic. Sounds great. Yeah. Um, could you share with us what you see happening for Cindy Costly in the future? I know, I know that you have, you have some good plans, maybe even great plans. You know, everyone has some vision about what they want to see, uh, maybe a year or two going down the road, despite all that is happening around us. But for you, Cindy Costly, what would yeah. you see? What do you see happening in your future? What is the thing that you really want to accomplish or achieve going forward? Ooh, I love that question. <laughs> I uh, So there's two different aspects of that. There's the personal. Yeah. There's actually three different aspects because there's the okay. healing journey still. Yes. So with regards to my healing journey, I am in my last year of these treatments. So okay. in a year from now, I envision myself being able to hold dogs and cats. I've never been able to be around them since the age of 15. Mm -hmm. um, highly, highly allergic. So I really get to, I'm, I'm really grateful to be able to bring animals back into my life. I used to ride horses and have dogs and cats and all of that until this happened at age 15. Um, and I look forward to traveling because yes, I haven't, yes. I haven't been able to travel a lot. So I'm really excited to continue and do these last treatments so that I can get myself to the point that I can travel a lot and go places mm -hmm. and get back out into the world a lot more right, uh, right. than I have been. That's okay. on the spirit, on the, the growth, you know, the yeah. journey, as far as my health, as far as my personal life with my husband, it goes, kind of goes back to the traveling. I'm mm -hmm. really just looking forward to having a lot more fun, uh, going to visit our grandkids much more often. They live yeah. in Washington. I have four year old grandbaby twins and an eight year old, and I haven't been able to go see them very much for the last seven years. So I'm really excited in a year. I know I'll be seeing them on a regular basis. And as far as my business, I, my book will be out and I look forward to continuing to travel and share my story and speak a lot more and continue to help others through their healing journey with their allergies and mast cell um, issues. Right. So, Wonderful. Hooray. Hooray, hooray. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just want to say really better. Yes. Yes. And I just want to say really quick, Andy, because I think this is so important for your uh -huh. listeners. 
Uh -huh. Seven years ago, I thought none of that was possible. Right. I right. would have thought that the best I was going to get myself to be would be to get myself where I can actually get out of the house a little bit. Yeah. And I have completely transformed my life. So anything's possible. Yes. Anything's possible when we believe in it and when we just say yes to it. Yes. And um, I just wanted to share that because I had very little faith seven years ago that I was even ever going to be able to, you know, be healthy, yeah. not alone. Yeah. But I had just enough faith and just enough belief to start taking those steps forward that has allowed me to be where I'm at today. Yeah, you had to start. You had to start. You had to make you that have leap. To start. Yes. yes. Wonderful. Yeah. Wow, that's powerful, Cindy. Thank you so much. Yeah. I want to play a short video for you. Yeah. And I have a powerful question coming out of that video. So just pay attention. Right. How can <laughs> someone, <laughs> I'm curious, I'm really curious. How can someone get lost on the way to becoming healed or getting better? How can we get lost or confused in that maze that I saw there and kind yeah. of lose our way? And how can that happen? How is that possible? There are so many ways that we get derailed from choosing uh -huh. us. Yes. Right. Uh, you know, I allowed my having the kids in a mm -hmm. career to derail mm -hmm. me from choosing myself all those right. years. Right. Yeah. And yeah. even if, you know, at other times there's things that come up with other people, you know, and yeah. we look at, well, they're worse off for me. I need to take care of them or mm -hmm. my kids are more important. I need to take care of them or my parents, you know, we have these sandwich families, right. That are yeah. taking care of children and parents. And it, the process of healing becomes about not about us. We forget about right. us. Yeah. Right. We lose sight of that. We are just as important as everybody else in our family and in our life. And it's easy, easy, easy to step away from what our needs are and get caught up in that maze of taking care of everybody else. Yes. And yet there's that little, little spark in the back of our head that knows Mm -hmm. I'm getting worse or things are, aren't good. Or, yeah. you know, I've, I've, I've got all these problems I should be addressing, but not right now. I don't have time. And mm. our, our little voice in the back of our head constantly tells us what we, yeah. what we need to know. Right. Yeah. I, all those years thought about that trauma so much. And I just thought, I just thought I was getting away with it unscathed. And really mm. my body was trying to remind me, you know, I'm here. You need to, you need to work on this. You need to heal me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's how we can get lost is mostly it's about looking, you know, setting our goals and trying to make more money or trying to take care of other people. And just by forgetting about ourselves mm -hmm. and that really we matter, as I mentioned earlier, just as much as everybody else in this world. Yeah. And if we're not healthy, we can't do what we need and what, you know, be at our best for the others around us. Okay. Great. Wonderful. So I, I get it that you have found a, a method or a technique for sort of managing your time so much so that you find enough time to take care of you yes, and you are able to prioritize. Um, yeah. But some people are not able to do that. Um, you know, they are, they are so challenged with so many things that are distracting mm -hmm. them and taking up their time and their efforts and their resources. But yeah. how do you come to a place where you have to just say to yourself, hey, I need to slow down because if I don't, I'm going to crash and burn. Yeah. And then what's going to happen, you know? How, how do they get to that place where mentally, you know, that paradigm shift takes place in their mind and they realize, hey, you know what? This is it. I've got yeah. to change. How do they get to that point? Uh, and it's such a great question. And the, 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 uh, the sad part answer to it is that most people get to where I got Mm -hmm. which is where I had no choice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I talk to my clients all the time about, are you going to choose this now while you're still getting to choose it? Or are you going to, is your body going to force you to choose it? Right. Right. We yes. are either consciously making choices in our lives or we're forced into making choices in our lives. And I was forced into making that choice and it worked out for me, but it doesn't work out for everybody. Yeah. So, yeah. 
I, you know, it's so important that we recognize that even though it looks like we have no time at all in the day for ourselves, mm -hmm. we actually are choosing that, right? Okay. Okay. And, you know, we get to, you said it earlier, 1%. We get yes. to put those small steps in place to start doing little things for ourselves. Okay. And the more you do that, the more you see the benefits of it and the more you make time and room for it. Mm -hmm. It's just that initial time period of saying, okay, how am I going to do this? I have, you know, I already have 30 hours in a, you know, to fit into a 24 hour day. How am I going to now fit me in? And once you get past that and you just say yes, mm -hmm. and it's literally about just saying yes to me and choosing me things will start unfolding in your life to help you have that time. Okay. And great. So, yeah. 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 Wonderful. So tell us in the, um, does dieting and exercise play a pivoting role in, in, in the process in terms of overcoming and the healing and so on? And, and if so, how? Absolutely. There's a lot of factors involved and, you know, especially when you're looking at allergies, which of course are the clientele that I work with, mm -hmm. you know, many of them, the majority of them, I'd say suffer from food allergies. Okay. So really this goes back to learning to listen to what our body can tolerate. Yeah. You know, I, I can't, it, it makes me cringe when I hear you, everybody needs to be out doing, you know, an hour of cardio every day. I couldn't do cardio, you know, for the last 20 years. Okay. Because it would send me into an allergic reaction. Yeah. So yeah. the key is to learn to listen to what your body needs, listen to what foods you can tolerate. And I actually teach people how to listen to their bodies and how to muscle test. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with muscle testing, but our bodies will tell us everything that, that, yes. it, that we need yes. to know. Yes. And so it's learning to figure out what foods are really best for you. You know, I thought I was just allergic to wheat, dairy, and soy. Mm -hmm. I was actually allergic to far more foods than that. Wow. And when I first started my healing journey, I was on bone broth diet. That's all my body could tolerate to get me to, you know, to love, to kind of level out my gut and have, I called it a gut rest. Okay. And so each client, everybody is so different as far as what's best. So when you say, give me some tips, the tip is know your body and what it needs and what's best for you because it's so different for everybody. There is not a one, you know, fix all, you know, one diet that's right for everybody. Of course, you know, eating healthy and, you know, focusing on the number of carbohydrates, proteins and fats yeah. and all of that yeah. is important, but more right. important than that on a cellular level, on a, on a level of healing, it's understanding exactly what's happening with your body and what it needs individually and not paying wow. attention to anybody else. All right. Great. So amazing. Thank you so much, Cindy. We are coming to the end of our show and it has been awesome and wonderful. You've been a great guest, Cindy. Thank and you. so I just want you to say something that you believe the world needs to hear right now. There are so many areas of healing that we need and it is so diverse in terms of what is happening, the pandemic, the war in Ukraine, people under the poverty line, people on the job line. What words of comfort and healing would you say to the world if you had the opportunity and you do, but let's just say you have this one big platform and, and you want to say something that would make a positive and daring impact on them. What would you say? Mm. I love that question. And I think really it comes down to two words uh -huh. and that is that you matter. Right. That yes. Each yes. individual person matters. And when we're, when we're looking at what's all going on in the world, mm -hmm. it's, so, it, it's so big and it's so overwhelming and it's yeah. so scary that yes. we kind of hide, right? And we get, yes. you know, caught up in some fear and some worry and stress and we start feeling like we can't make a difference. Mm. But we can, even if it's yeah. only the difference in our lives. Yes. By yes. healing ourselves, we're then that's that energy and that that healing power is spreading out to others. And, you know, you, if you heal yourself, you're a role model to your children, to your family, you're right. seeing what you're doing. So yes. the key is to know that you matter tremendously mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. everything you can do to help yourself is a gift to this world. Every yeah. little step you can take yeah. to heal you and to take care of you 
is a gift that you're giving the world. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing Cindy Costley, our you're survivor welcome. guest, live in the breakout room on Andy's personal development. And we're going to give Cindy the time now to share with you the handles, uh, uh, social networking um, platforms. And if you need Cindy's services, she can tell you how you can make contact with her. So, Cindy, I'm going to leave you for a moment and you just share yourself with our people. Thank you, Andy. Okay. If you want to learn a little bit more about the underlying answers, just go to any of my social media sites. They're all at the underlying answers. So hashtag the underlying answers. And you can find me on a private Facebook group as well. So if you're dealing with allergies, allergic reactions, mast cell issues, um, you can join my private Facebook group where we talk and I share in very big detail about my own healing journey as well. That's also the underlying answers. And you can go to the underlying answers.com to learn about my more about my prep, my platform in my community and the community is designed to help you heal one step at a time so i give weekly curriculum um you know bi-weekly conversations live with you and all kinds of information on healing your allergies on a management level as well as looking at the underlying answers and so you can find me again last time i'll say it at the underlying answers.com and if you can uh, fill out the form, if you want to ask me any questions, I'd love to do a free consultation with you as well. You can find that on my website as well. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Great. Wonderful. Thank you, Cindy. That was really informative. And I'm really so impressed by the time that we have spent together. Total value and awesome inspiration for our people. This is Andy on Andy's Personal Development on the Love Bits A channel saying so long. See you next time from Cindy and I. We say thank you to our listeners, our listeners, our supporters, our friends, family, loved ones, everyone that's on the platform. Until next time, remember the three key words, health, happiness, and prosperity. So, Godspeed, Shalom, Namaste. Bye for now. See you soon. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Hold on.